In this lecture, let's try to understand what is query string, how to specify a query string in the URL, and how to read the value of a query string from our ASP.NET Core application. Query string is a way of passing some extra data to the server with the request using the URL. Here we have an example of a URL. So the URL is localhost colon 4200 slash products. And after that we have some strings. So a query string can be specified in the URL by using a question mark. And after that we can specify some query strings. Here in this URL we are specifying two query strings. The first query string is ID with the value 101 and the second query string is the name with the value iPhone. And if you notice, these two query strings are separated by this ampersand. So you can specify a query string after a question mark and you can specify as many query strings as you want. Those query strings should be separated by the ampersand sign. Using this query string, we are passing some extra data to the server. As you can see, we are passing the ID and name and their values to the server. Now keep in mind that the query string should only be specified for GET requests, not for the POST or other type of requests. If you want to send some data to the server in the POST request, that data should be passed in the request body and not as a query parameter. Query parameter should only be passed with GET requests. Let's see how we can read the query strings from our ASP.NET Core application. So in the last lecture, we specified some routes. Let's go ahead and let's specify one more route here by using this else if. And here we want to check if the path is equal to products. If the path is product, let me copy these two line of codes from here and let me paste it inside this if else statement. And there, let's say you are in products page. Okay, let's run this application. And here, let's specify products. So if I press enter, it is saying the page you are looking for is not found. But here we have defined our product page. So it is product and not products. Okay, let's type product. So now it says you are in products page. All right. Now let's say from the products page, we want to get a specific product with ID, let's say 101. And the name of the product should be iPhone. So for that, we can pass this information to the server using query string in the URL. So in the URL, currently the URL is root URL slash products. And to this URL, we want to append some query strings. Now, if we want to add some query strings, first we need to add a question mark. And after that, we can specify the query strings. So the first query string is going to be ID. And let's say its value is going to be 101. And now I also want to specify another query string. For that, we can use this ampersand sign and then we can specify another query string. So a query string is basically a key value pair. Here, ID is the key and its value is 101. In the same way, let's say we also want to have this name query string. So this name is the key and let's say value is iPhone. Okay. So here we are passing two query strings. If you want to pass more query strings, then you can again use this ampersand symbol and then you can specify another query string like this. But here, I only want to pass two query strings, the ID and the name. So I can specify it like this. So now when I press enter, it still says you are in products page. Because here, if you notice, the resource is the product. So that's why we are still in the product page. Now from that product page, we want to filter the product based on the ID and its name. So here, we want to read these value from our ASP.NET Core application. Let's see how we can do that. Let's go back to our ASP.NET Core application. Let's stop the application first. Now, the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to check if on the request we have any query string. For that, we can use this context object. On that context object, let's access the request object. And on that request object, we have a dictionary called query. Okay, so this query is a dictionary and this query is going to store all the query strings as a key value pair. So you can see it is an iQuery collection. Okay, so it is basically a dictionary which stores the query string as a key value pair. So here, first we want to check if this query contains a key. For that, we can use this contains key method. And let's say the key name is ID. 
right? Because we are passing the ID and name as the query string. So first we want to check if this query dictionary contains a key called ID. If the ID key is there, that means the user has specified a query string called ID in the URL. So what we want to do is we want to create a variable. Let's call it ID. And to that, we want to assign the value of the ID query string. So again, in order to access the ID query string on this context object, let's first access the request object because remember that the query string is passed with the request. And on that, we have this query dictionary. Let's access that. And to that, let's pass the key. So key is ID. And now this statement here, it should return the value of the ID key and it should be assigned to this ID variable. And then let's also use an end operator here and let's check if the query string also contains a name key. So I will copy this line. I'll paste it here. And let's check if the query dictionary also contains a name key. If it is there, then we also want to access that name query string and its value. And I want to assign it to this name variable. And here the key is name. So if in the URL, the user has specified this ID and name query string, then what we want to do is we want to send a response. For that, I will copy this line of code. Okay, and there I want to say, you selected the product with id and then let's append the id variable and name and let's append the name variable here okay so keep in mind in this id we are storing the value of the id query string and in this name we are storing the value of the name query string and once we have sent that response we also want to return from this function so for that i'm going to use this return keyword okay so that means once we have sent this response we don't want to execute these two lines of code so we simply want to return from this function so let's run this program now so currently we are in the home page let's go to the product page for that after the root url i will type slash product and here this p should be caps Okay, so it says you are in products page. Now after this, let's add some query string. So let's say ID equal 101 and name equal iPhone. So press enter. It says you selected the product with ID 101 and name iPhone. If I type ID as 234 and let's say name of the product is Samsung. So we should see that in the result in the response but if i don't specify any query string here then it should say you are in products page as you can see so this is how we can read query strings from the url in our asp.net core application all the query strings which we specify in the url that will be available inside this query dictionary which is available on the request object so we can access the value of those query strings using the key like we are doing here also if you notice we are sending the response but there we are not setting the status code so let me cut this line of code from here and let's put it here before this if statement okay so no matter whether this response will be sent or this response will be sent the status code is always going to be 200 okay so always keep in mind that you need to set the status code and the body of the response before sending it. You cannot send the response and then set the status code and body for that response. In that case, the status code and the body will not be available on the response which you have sent. Okay, so keep in mind that before sending the response only, you should set the status code, the header and the body for the response. Alright, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.